Welcome in. It's Main Street Today time. I'm Devin O'Day. So glad that you're here. We love telling the stories of the Mid-State. We're here every day, middays, just to kind of go around the Mid-State and see all the things that are happening, all the 4th of July celebrations, which they're all different days. And so they're going to be fireworks celebrations and free things. And this is the first time in a year that we've really gotten to go out and be a part of things. So we hope that if you have something going on, you can either reach out to me and say, here's what's happening. Send me the information. If you have a nonprofit, send me the information and tell me, and you can be a guest on the show. It's just that easy. Or uh, you can report on it and send me a video because I love real people videos of what's going on in the neighborhood. Or maybe you can report on something that's happening in your area and send that to me as well. Can't promise you that I'll use it, but if I can, and the quality is where we can use it, I'll definitely do it. Make sure horizontal, not vertical. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, we have all sorts of stuff on our show today. There's some free shows coming up free that you're not going to believe, including one with Daryl Worley. Do we not love Daryl Worley? Is he not one of the best singers ever? This is the time of year where he usually does his fan club party, but we're not having the CMA music fest like we did in the past. So he is going to be doing something in Gallatin. We got that coming up. But today is also National Camera Day. Let's kick things off with this story. You will not believe. Think in your mind of all the famous photos. You think of you have, have a few in your mind? We're going to tell you the story of the most famous, famous, iconic photo ever in the history of photos. Did you know that photography has been around for almost 200 years now? In that span of time, an almost 3.5 trillion estimated photos have been taken. To put that number into perspective, you would get that amount of photos if you took 480 individual pictures of every single person currently living on the planet. But what's the most famous photograph ever taken out of those 3.5 trillion? Time Magazine has an entire list of what it deems to be the 100 most influential photos of all time, including famous photos like Lunch Atop a Skyscraper, Migrant Mother, Mushroom Cloud over Nagasaki, Muhammad Ali vs. Sonny Liston, and A Man on the Moon, among many others. In reality, the most famous photo ever taken is this simple photo of a grass-covered hill on a sunny January afternoon. Titled Bliss, the photograph used as the default desktop wallpaper of Windows XP has likely been seen by over 1 billion people and is thought to be the most recognizable photograph ever. In photographer Charles O'Rear's own words, It is everywhere as we all know. We see it in so many places. It's, it's, it's around us. Although some might argue that Bliss is not famous because it lacks the critical acclaim that many of the time photographs or say, a World Press Club photo of the year receives, Bliss's ubiquity and inconspicuousness make it so well known. Like O'Rear says, I have a theory that 
Anybody now from age 15 on for the rest of their life will remember this photograph. Just doing a quick image search of Bliss will reveal thousands of copycat photos along with numerous photoshops and parodies, cementing the photograph as not only an important landmark in photographic history, but also as a major aspect of internet popular culture. The frequent internet memes of Bliss have caused a sizable number of people to question the authenticity of the photograph, resulting in claims that the photo was digitally altered or that Bliss isn't even a real photo. However, besides some very minor alterations done by Microsoft, the photo you see is identical to the original negative. Also, this 2006 photograph taken by photographers Golden and Senby shows that the hill in the original Bliss photo is in fact a real location in Sonoma County, California, a little ways off of Interstate 80. The Windows XP developers realized this, and that's why they supposedly spent more than $100,000 to purchase all the rights to the photograph from O'Rear. Although the true total Microsoft spent to purchase the photo is not publicly known, the amount has been confirmed to be the second largest payment ever made for a single image. In fact, the payment was so large that O'Rear had to fly up to Microsoft's headquarters in Seattle, Washington to hand deliver the photo's negative and the required paperwork because all available shipping services insurance policy couldn't cover the photograph's total price. We can choose to remember Bliss, not just as a computer wallpaper, but more as an influential work of art that will stand the test of time. Is that not the coolest story? I would never have guessed that. Never, ever in a million years. And E.B., Elizabeth, who's watching today, of course, E.B., you're always here and we love you. And um, I just, I had all sorts of ideas about different photos, but the one that came up was that one. I want to ask you, if you're watching today, wherever you're watching, whether it's on the replay or whatever, I want to invite you. If you have a cool photo that you would like to share on our thread, I invite you to. Nothing nasty. I'm not asking to do that. Now, none of y'all, y'all trolls, just go on. Just go on. But all you good people out there who watch every day, we welcome you to leave a photo that you think is pretty good. And if there's one that you really like, um, who knows? You know, maybe you'll get famous and someone will see your photograph and it'll end up on a wallpaper or something like that. Hey, what are you doing on 4th of July weekend? Well, there are uh, events starting on Friday night and I think Lebanon, uh, our fireworks are Friday night. And then I think that Hendersonville is on the third, the fourth, we've got, um, Franklin is going to be on July 4th. Nashville is going to be July 4th. So really all weekend long, you can be part of festivities. Hi, this is Kathleen Hawkins with the Hendersonville Area Chamber of Commerce. And I am so excited to share with you that Freedom Festival is back and bigger and better than ever before. Thanks to our presenting sponsor, Remax Choice Properties. This year, it's on July 3rd from 5 to 10 p.m. at Drake's Creek Park. And I have five very important things that you need to know. First, this is the largest chamber fundraiser that we do all year long. And in 2019, we were able to gift $35,000 to deserving schools and area teachers right here in Hendersonville because of your support. Two, I need you to know that the event is from 5 to 10. We are going to have fabulous vendors, amazing food trucks, and so much more there for you and your family. Three, it's a free event, which is important for you to keep in mind. And we have a special tribute concert starting and sponsored by Mr. Goodroof starting at 6 p.m. And then you also need to know, thanks to the Hendersonville Parks Department, we have fireworks launching at 9 p.m., weather permitting. So bring your family, come on out, have a good time, visit us at Drake's Creek Park. Now, if you're from out of the area or if you're going to be tuning in from the lake, tune in to 100.7 WHIN Radio and listen live when the fireworks go off again at 9 p.m. Visit FreedomFestivalTN.com for more information and secure your vendor booth today. See you on July 3rd.
Hendersonville, the little city off by the lake, is going to have some wonderful fireworks. But tonight, if you'd like to see some fireworks, I don't know if it, no, they won't have fireworks tonight, but they do have a fireworks package, the Nashville Sounds. But tonight's my favorite night at the Sounds because it is Tito's Tail Wagon Tuesdays. 30 bucks, you and your dog uh, get to come in, and they're making a big donation every Tuesday night to Nashville Humane. So Tito's Tail Wagon Time, and they have all sorts of specials. They've got a section for dogs. And uh, of course, bring social dogs and have them on a leash and all that good stuff. And there's plenty of water there. And they have all sorts of things for dogs and special treats. So it's really fun. All right. August 19th. If you want to see a free show that's going to be fantastic, Daryl Worley. He's going to be in Gallatin on the Historic Square in Gallatin for third Thursday on Main. Brought to you by State Farm uh, and the opener is Adam and Amy Pope. And if I'm not mistaken, I think, aren't they? Uh, I think Adam is Alan Jackson's nephew. I'm not sure. I think so. But anyway, August 19th, Daryl Worley will be there. And I love me some Daryl Worley. And what is really great on August 19th, the concert is absolutely free in Gallatin, one of the friendliest cities in America, according to Reader's Digest. And um, the other thing that's really cool about that is also we have a newspaper there, the Gallatin News. If you don't know about the Gallatin News, check it out on Facebook. One, two. Whiskey makes me think about you. Yeah, whiskey makes me think about you. There ain't no doubt about it. I'm better off without it. Whiskey makes me think about you I need to change my ways Acquire a whole new taste Tonight I need to drink A little less proof Less spike in my Coca-Cola Act like I don't even know you Pop a top on an ice cold one And lose these blues Whiskey makes me think about you Whiskey makes me think about you There ain't no doubt about it I'm better off without it Whiskey makes me think about you I forget that you don't love me Baby, you know how it does me I get a little buzzy and I whip out my phone Emotions and emojis I know I overload you Girl, have I ever told you I hate drinking alone? Whiskey makes me think about you Whiskey makes me think about you There ain't no doubt about it I'm better off without it Whiskey makes me think about you Should have cut me off Done got too drunk to walk But they said I could sure enough talk About the good girl I had I One sip it led to another I started blaming your sister and your mother I threw up an old brother I sure miss your dad Whiskey makes me think about you Whiskey makes me think about you there ain't no doubt about it, I'm better off without it. Whiskey makes me think about you. Whiskey makes me think about you. There ain't no doubt about it, I'm better off without it. Whiskey makes me think about you. Oh, whiskey makes me think about you.
Jeff Pennington of Pennington Distilling Company in Nashville knows nothing about growing corn. So why is he in this cornfield in West Tennessee? Well, he knew he needed it to manufacture Tennessee whiskey. You know, you've really got the grain and letting the grain do the talking. You know, all bourbon's got to be, all bourbon in Tennessee whiskey has to be by law 51% corn. So everybody uses mainly a corn cook in a bourbon in Tennessee whiskey, but it's that other 49% and where does the corn come from? That corn is coming from Renfro Farms in Huntington, about two hours west of Music City. We decided to use Tennessee white corn. One is a differentiator. It's got a little bit higher starch, a little bit sweeter uh, corn. So we use that. We use our rye and our as much rye and wheat as we can uh, come from Tennessee. We're, as we start to outgrow that, we'll have to probably start looking at other states. But only grain that we really don't get locally is our malted barley. The agricultural products are transformed into Pennington signature spirits. They keep their volunteer state roots prominent, from the Davidson Reserve, since Nashville is in Davidson County, to Pickers Vodka, paying homage to the Pickers who make Music City hum. They're also famous for their sipping creams. And you may think that once it's bottled and boxed, the relationship with the farmer is over, but it's not. Distill it and then take the leftover mash, let's take the alcohol out and we ship it back to other farmers to feed their, their cows and pigs and hogs and everything. Everybody but horses, can't feed it to horses. <laughs> the spent grain from the distilling process is picked up and hauled to a farm in Castalian Springs, Tennessee. Cuts feed cows uh, significantly. You hungry? <laughs> Justin Gregory, along with help from his son, Farmer, feeds the liquid leftovers to his livestock. Which right now it's about 80% water, so we have to feed a whole lot of it for them to get the nutrients that they need. But I mean, I mean, we're getting quite a bit in, and you know, every week. Well, the bovines can't be the only ones having all the fun. The tasting room at Pennington Distilling is open, allowing customers a true grain-to-glass experience. In Nashville, I'm Tammy Arender for RFD-TV. Thank you to my friend Tammy Arinder. Uh, grew up same place I did, went to same journalism school, and she covers the ag news over at RFD TV. Great stories. She's all over Tennessee, and she was just at the Wilson County Ag Center covering the Red Angus show for us. Hey, by the way, if you've ever heard of Country Rebel, they have great videos, and you can go and see. And they, they joined up with my crazy friend, Taylor Lynn. Taylor Lynn is Loretta Lynn's granddaughter, and she is out this week for the, the 4th of July celebration camp out at the Loretta Lynn campground, the uh, Hurricane Mills Ranch, the Loretta Lynn Ranch.net is how you get tickets to find out more. But here is her brand new video. We love us some Taylor Lynn and go to Country Rebel and click subscribe. Something you say I ought to know that he don't love me anymore, and I'll have to let him go. You say you're gonna take him, oh, but I don't think you can, cause you ain't woman enough to take my. At things that he don't need He took a second look at you But he's in love with me Well, I don't know where that leaves you Oh, but I know where I stand And you ain't a woman enough to take my Stand right 
out here. It'll be over my dead body. So get out while you can. Cause you ain't a woman enough to take my man. No, you ain't a woman enough to take my Taylor has the personality that you, it's just infectious. It just grabs you and hugs you right to her. She is so much fun. And you can see her on tour with Trey Twitty and her new album is called Loretta. Uh, Taylor Lynn sings Loretta Lynn. It's a fantastic new album. Um, the Heart of Texas Records put that out and it is really, really fun. And those songs, just bringing them up and bringing them up to date and bringing new life to them. And traditional country is something that I love. And it's so much fun to share really good stuff with you. If you hear some great music and you want to share it with us, please let us know because we're always looking for it. I just got a word that, okay. Oh, I can't see if I see if I can find it. Paulina Jane that just signed up a new new show and she is going to be performing here in Nashville uh, this week for the 4th of July. And I, I just got the little contact and I, and I forgot to write it down anyway. Um, there's something that is going to be taking place at the Hendersonville 4th of July Freedom Fest. And it's called LAU's Fallen Heroes Memorial. It's at Drake's Creek Park. And it's a really, really interesting thing. Let me see if I can find that picture for you. It is a memorial that has been traveling around and it's got 7,040 dog tags that make up an American flag that is lit up. And that represents 7,040 7, people and 50 gold stars representing 50 gold star families. And as it tours around America, it's raising money to build a national memorial for people who've lost their lives fighting for our country. And isn't that what Freedom and Freedom Fest and the 4th of July really is all about? Just in, incredible, just incredible. And so you can find out more about that at Freedom Fest. I wanted to make sure that I told you about that, that a lot of people don't realize that that memorial was gonna be there at Freedom Fest, but it is. My name is Jennifer Rapela. And my connection to the birthing barn is through the fairgrounds and Tim Edwards because we were asked to provide farrowing sows or gilts to the Wilson County 2018 fair. We were asked and one thing led to another. She's seen a live birth. So far we have five piglets alive and well. This was the first year we'd ever had any animal at the Wilson County Fair actually have babies on the grounds during the fair. We had no idea what, what would happen with this. We didn't anticipate all the viewers on Facebook. We didn't even anticipate on it going live on Facebook. It grew so much that in seven days, there were 13.6 million people that had viewed something about the pigs. There were people from Chile, India, Ireland, Australia, Canada. During the two hours that Squeaker had her babies, there was over 275,000 people that watched. And it was the people on the live feed that were asking why we did not have a birthing barn. There's other birthing barns across the country. What's gonna stand out between us and them is the live feed. We are constantly looking at the live feed and people are clicking in and asking us questions, and we answer their questions. Hi guys. Christian. Good afternoon, everybody. There's no other uh, birthing barn that is doing this. This is a rough draft of the birthing barn that we want to build, which is about 21,000 square feet. People would come in through here, and this area right here would be a walkway for the individuals who want to come see the animals. This area here is actually where the administration will educate to talk to the people that are coming in to look at the animals, and of course the animals will be in these stalls here. Now this area here will have bleachers, and it will seat up to 300 people is what we're, we're searching for. This will actually be the birthing stage area 
will have a, a total of 18 pens in all. We plan on having two to three cameras in each stall. This area here is what we call a vet clinic. We will have a feed and storage and hay area here, administration here. Basically what we're wanting out of the birthing barn is to be able to have cows, sheep, goats, horses, and pigs all have babies for the nine days of the fair. But not only to educate people just those nine days, to have it open all year round. So FFA, 4-H, local veterinarians, colleges, anybody that can utilize the building for agricultural purposes. I mean, it's unlimited what we can do. This is a first. And I believe the potential of this is great. It, it can just be never ending. This is what the kids are wanting. This is what the kids are needing. And we have to get agricultural back in our daily lives or we're not gonna have it. These kids aren't gonna know where their food comes from. And this thing could grow to you no know, telling how big and, and how many people we could help and, and how many people we could reach and to educate on this. And we would like for you to be part of it. We would like to help you grow your business. If you are a business, we would like to be you to be part of this to educate not just children, but also grown-ups, people. And we would really appreciate it if you would help us out. I was by Edward's feed yesterday and sat and talked with Jen and Tim and they really are very close and they've got a groundbreaking day to start this amazing agricultural educational experience. And it's not just about Wilson County, it's about the world because so many people are watching and so many people get to learn. If you'd like to find out more about giving, maybe you're part of a corporation that believes in agriculture and you'd like to be a part of this incredible event, you can go to Birthing Barn dot org and get information or follow them on Facebook and click the little notification bell or on YouTube and you can do that. And it is, it's just fabulous what you can see. Hey, we're going to close the show today with someone who is going to be at Backstage Nashville on Saturday. It's at 1230. I will be there. I host it every week, but this time it's going to be really something really cool because Billy Montana and his son, Randy Montana, They've, they've all they've performed a lot and they've both done backstage in Nashville, but they've never been on stage together and done a show together. So it's going to be a one of a kind event, but I'm going to play daddy right now. Billy Montana, I've written with him and I just adore him. He's a good family man, a good, he's an incredible believer. And uh, he's kind of a farmer himself. He comes from, uh, from farm country up in the Midwest and one of his dreams, he told me one time, he said, I'd, I'd really love to have a truck farm. And there are a lot of country stars like Henry Paul has a place out in uh, Springfield, I think, Robertson County. And he's it's all about agriculture and he's growing plants and he and his wife and family, they're, they're growing things. And, you know, there are a lot of people are heading back into agriculture. But we're going to close the show with a very special throwback to a time on Backstage Nashville when Billy Montana told the story of a very special song he wrote. Be safe, be kind. Remember, you are loved, everybody. This is uh, the uh, first hit that I was a part of writing that, uh, uh, you know, it was that one that came 12 years after we moved to Nashville <laughs> in 1989. And uh, this was a hit in 2002. Um, but it was actually released on September 10th, 2001, which was a Monday. And uh, it was released to radio. And, of course, Tuesday the towers went down and uh, nobody gave a flip if you had a song out on the radio or not. Everybody was more, I know I didn't care anymore. And uh, it just changed things. But the, the cool thing, uh, one of the cool things that happened with this song is that um, about two days after that, it was two days after, I remember it very clearly. I pulled up in my driveway um, under our American flag and um, so I believe it was just the DJ took this song and uh, had interwoven sound bites from Ground Zero and President Bush speaking in news feeds and all that while the song was playing. These, these sound bites were going in and out of the music, and I broke down and cried because 
everybody was still, you know, everybody was standing in bloodlines and what we, in shock and wondering what we could do. And to hear the song, obviously it was written well before that, but having it used in that capacity was such a big, uh, such an amazing and humbling thing. And so um, it went on to have a, a life apart from uh, September 11th. But uh, I, uh, I don't usually tell that story, but since it's Veterans Day, I thought I would. And... Um, you know, just that we owe so much to the servicemen and women. I've been, uh, I've been blessed to go to uh, Afghanistan twice to play songs for the guys and gals over there, and uh, Kuwait, and uh, Italy, and Djibouti, and Germany, and Bahrain, and um, to see them in their element, I, it just... I'm so proud of them and uh, proud to call them uh, um, Americans. And uh, so, uh, yeah, we really, uh, today I'm really glad that uh, folks seem to be stepping up. Anyway, uh, rain is my favorite metaphor. And um, if I don't put rain in a song around the publishing company, you know, my publisher's like, uh, hey, Montana, you okay? And I'm like, yeah, why? What's up? You know, well, you didn't put rain in your song today, You're just making sure everything's all right. <laughs> um, and so, it's, uh, it's, my, it's my favorite metaphor for challenging times, I think. And uh, anyway, wrote this with uh, Helen Darling, who's an amazing singer. And this also was just a guitar vocal, and uh, with Helen's voice on it, it was so amazing. And Jody Messina knew right away she wanted to record this song, and while in the studio, Tim McGraw was co-producing it, and uh, so he said, I want to put a background vocal on that. And so he ran in and sang a background vocal on it, and actually their performance was nominated for a Grammy. And if you look up the word nominated, it means didn't win. <laughs> but I don't care. Still one of my favorite songs to play. I hope you like it. It's called Bring on the Rain. Hey, you all have been an amazing audience. Uh, always a blessing to be a part of these shows and uh, be able to hang out with friends like Ray and Aaron and nice to meet Paul for the first time and I uh, really enjoyed your music and, and uh, so yeah thanks for hanging out with us this afternoon y'all another day is almost come and gone I can't imagine what else could go wrong Sometimes I'd like to hide away Somewhere and lock the door A single battle lost But not the war Cause tomorrow's another day And I'm thirsty anyway So bring on the rain yeah. It's almost like the hard time circle couple drops and then they all start coming down yeah and I might feel defeated I might hang my head I might be barely breathing but I'm not dead no and tomorrow's another day and I'm thirsty anyway
Billy Montana. Thank you so much. Y'all, I'm going to clear in the room. Carl Curtis.